Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I'm going to be going over AC power for purely inductive circuits. That's circuits that contain only inductors, no capacitors, and no resistors. And I'm going to be doing that using this diagram, which shows the relationship between the voltage, the current, and the power. The voltage is, of course, represented by this red waveform. The current is here represented by this blue waveform. And the power is, of course, represented by this dashed green line waveform. Now, one thing that you should know and that you should recognize for inductive circuits and on this graph is that the voltage and the current are out of phase. The peak voltage and the peak current do not occur at the same time, the same point in the cycle. And in fact, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. You can see the voltage peaks right here, and then the vo current peaks after. The peak voltage comes between the peak current. The peak voltage comes, between, comes before the peak current. So for purely inductive circuits, the voltage and the current are out of phase, and the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. And we call that the phase angle, which we give the designation phi. Okay, now, you'll notice that the voltage through one cycle oscillates between positive and negative values. The current also oscillates between positive and negative values, and the power also oscillates between positive and negative values through one cycle. And you can see on this diagram we have shown just about a little more than one cycle and one and a half cycles. But when we calculate the power, we often want to calculate the average power. And this is the equation that we use to calculate the average power in an AC circuit. We say that the average power is equal to the RMS voltage times the RMS current for power. We use the RMS values times the cosine of the phase angle phi. Now, we said down here that for inductive circuits, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees, and that's the phase angle. So we're now going to take the cosine of 90 degrees. Well, if you remember what the cosine of 90 degrees is, if you remember what the cosine curve looks like, or if you can do that on your calculator, which is pretty simple to do, you will find out that the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. That means when we calculate the average power, we multiply the voltage times the current, but then we multiply it times the cosine of 90 degrees. Well, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So the voltage times the current times zero is simply zero. And that tells us that the average power in an inductive circuit is zero watts. That circuit consumes no power. Now, how can it be when we have that AC circuit that's oscillating between those positive and negative values that the power, the average power, is zero watts. Well, I'm going to try and show you why that is. I think it's very interesting how that works out that the average power is zero. And we're going to do that by looking at the relationship between the voltage, the current, and the power through one cycle. This would be one cycle from this point to this point, and we're going to look at it one quarter of a cycle at a time to see how the math works out. Now, for the first quarter cycle, which I have represented by this shaded area, you will notice that when we calculate the power, we said down here we calculate the voltage times the current. Well, the voltage is positive and the current is positive, so that's going to result in a positive power. That's kind of the average over that first quarter cycle. Well, for the next quarter cycle, you'll notice that the current is still positive, but now the voltage has moved into the negative area. So we have a negative voltage times a positive current, a negative times a positive results in a negative power. And now the cycle kind of repeats itself, but here we have a negative current and a negative voltage. So we have both of the current and the voltage are negative, and of course a negative times a negative is a positive, so now we have a positive value for the power. Now for the last quarter cycle, now the voltage is, has moved back into the positive area, but the current is still negative, so now we're going to multiply a positive voltage times a negative current and a positive times a voltage, excuse me, a positive voltage times a negative current results in a negative power. So you can see when we take the average of those three, those four quarter cycles, we add this value. 
to this value, to this value, to this value, that the result of adding the area under this curve, the area under this curve, the area under this curve, and this negative value over here, we get that the average power is zero. We can represent that by this line right along the zero line to show that the average power is zero. Okay, now what is the difference between positive and negative power? How can the power be positive and how can it be negative? What does that mean when it's positive and negative? Well, when the power is positive, that simply means that it's just the direction that the power is flowing. When it's positive, it's flowing from the source to the load. And when the power is negative, then the power is flowing from the load back to the direction of the source in the circuit. Okay, so there you go. That's power for AC inductive circuits, and the average power is zero. And on the last slide, I'm just going to summarize what we just went over. For purely inductive circuits, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. We call that the phase angle. You remember the phase angle for the induct for the capacitive circuits is also 90 degrees, but in that case, the current leads the voltage. For resistive circuits, the phase angle is zero because the voltage and the current are in phase. But for inductive circuits, the phase angle is 90 degrees. And you can see we use this common acronym, uh, this common uh, kind of device here, Ellie from Ellie the Iceman. L tells us we're talking about an inductive circuit because that's the symbol for an inductor. And then for this inductive circuit, this shows us that the voltage leads the current. Okay. Now, in an inductive circuit, the power can be both positive and negative. And we just said what that means. When the power is positive, then that means the power is flowing from the source to the load. It's simply the direction that the power is flowing. When the power is negative, it doesn't really mean it's less than zero. It just means that the power is flowing from the load back to the source. And when we add up all the positives and the negatives, we get the average, and the average power in that inductive circuit is zero. Okay, That circuit consumes no power and can do, do no real work. Okay, so there you go. That is uh, uh, AC power for inductive circuits. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the positive comment section below. And don't forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.